Our New Testament lesson for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, beginning with verse 1. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angels said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. This is the word of the Lord. Well, I went to Saturday's Easter party and the Easter egg hunt here at Chapel by the Sea yesterday, and Jimmy Steele and his great group of volunteers, they did such an outstanding job. But I, I realized that Easter egg hunts are a lot like the Kentucky Derby. There's a lot of waiting, and then it starts, and two minutes later, it's over. And the kids have their Easter eggs, and they're ready to move on to something else. And that was great, though, because the kids did enjoy it. And, and while I was waiting for the uh, uh, race to begin, a race, it's an Easter egg hunt, it looks like a race, one of the other adults and I were talking and talking about Easter, and she told me a joke. Maybe you've heard this. A minister asked three men, what is the true meaning of Easter? And one man said, oh, you know, that's when they celebrate the birth of the ever-ready bunny on the commercials. No, said the minister. And the second one said, Easter, Easter. Isn't that when the Easter Bunny visits and brings chocolate to all the good boys and girls? Ah, well, that's close, but no, it's not even close. That's not it, said the minister. The third one said, Easter. Isn't that when Christ died on the cross, was buried, came to life again? He walked out of the empty tomb. He looked around saw his shadow and declared there was going to be a few more weeks of winter. <laughs> well, we celebrate Easter again. So what? You think about that first Easter, and I've got to tell you, I think they were more confused than any 21st century person is confused. They're confused about what's happening. They don't know what's going on. And there's not a lot of celebrating happening either. The first people who encountered the resurrection were not at all happy about it. They were the guards. They see the stone being rolled away. They see the angel pushing it aside and then sitting on the stone waiting for the women to come. I cannot imagine. I mean, there you are in a cemetery and someone who is dead pops out of the grave and comes to life. That's got to be an unnerving experience. It never happened to me, but it happens to the guards and they are terrified. And more than afraid, they are paralyzed with fear. They are like dead men, the scripture says. The women, they have to get up at dawn to go to the cemetery to prepare the body of Christ for permanent burial, or so they think. They're unable to do that immediately after the death of Jesus because of the Sabbath rules. And Saturday being the Sabbath in the Jewish culture, they arrive on Sunday morning and they see these terrified guards and the angel at the open tomb and everyone is reacting pretty much the same way with confusion and not with celebration but with fear fear of course because a, a person who's supposed to be dead comes to life again but also in larger part because whenever we get really close to the presence of God there's a little bit of fear, or should be. We love God, God loves us, we trust God, but God is all-powerful. We are sinful people. God is perfect, and we are unworthy to be in His presence. And when we come close to God, we realize that, and that can become a frightening thing. So everyone is afraid on Easter Sunday, on that first one, but here's the thing. 
The guards are afraid and nothing changes for them. They don't become disciples. They don't follow Christ. They are the first witnesses to the resurrection, the very first. But for them, Easter makes no difference at all. The women are just as afraid, but in their fear there is some joy. And in their fear, or maybe in spite of their fear, they follow Christ. They are obedient. And for them, Easter makes all the difference in the world. Imagine that the most important thing that could possibly happen in your life finally happens and nothing changes. It doesn't make any difference. For example, you graduate from college and instead of going out and getting a job, you stay at home with mom and dad, you get an allowance. At the age of 58, you are still getting a curfew. Graduation day comes and goes, nothing changes. I'm not talking about moving back in. I'm talking about just staying there, nesting forever. Or you finally get that promotion. Instead of going to the new office at the corner with the window overlooking the bay, you go to your same old cubicle downstairs in the basement. I don't mean for a transition time of a week or two. I mean, you just stay there. You get married. After the service, the bride goes to her home, the groom goes to his home. I don't know, maybe that happened to a few of you, but it's not the way it's supposed to happen. It's ridiculous to think that the most important thing in your life can happen and nothing changes. Imagine, Jesus is crucified, he's put in the grave, he's buried, he's resurrected, he comes to life again, he lives again. It would be ridiculous to think that living through Easter would make no impact on your life, no difference at all. What would have happened if after Christ's resurrection, Peter had gone back to his fishing boat and lived out the rest of his days? What would have happened if all of the disciples just went back to the old way of doing things? What would have happened if none of the Gospels had been written? If Paul had not encountered the risen Lord and gone out on the mission field. The resurrection of Christ is not the kind of event that you celebrate once and it doesn't change your life. It demands a change. The resurrection of Christ validates everything in the gospel. It verifies everything that Christ tells us to be and do. You cannot come in here, celebrate Easter, and then go out and not be changed. Or it shouldn't be that way. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? He gives a two-part answer. First, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. You know, a man who died, was buried, and comes back to life and tells you to love God, you better listen to that man. Nor can you come in here and celebrate Easter and not go out and love your neighbor. And Jesus, when asked about the greatest commandment, that was the second part, and love your neighbor as yourself. A dead man comes back to life, walks out of the grave, tells you to love your neighbor, yeah, you'd better do your best. Easter should make a difference in your life. You cannot come in here. Celebrate Easter, sing the hymns, and then go out and not show mercy, not have compassion, not work for peace, not live a life. Christ has called you to live. Has Easter made any difference in your life?